Good morning, Heritage of Faith family. We are so glad that you are here. Here are just a few announcements and events we have coming your way. We are so excited about our discipleship class. Take the next step in your walk with God as we cover the basics of faith in our next step class every Sunday morning before morning service. Here at Heritage of Faith, we love to fellowship as a family and our Thrive groups are a great way for you to discover your purpose in our church community and connect with people that have the same interests as you. Talk to one of our Thrive group leaders after service in the lobby to find the group that is right for you. Join us May 27th for a night of worship, prayer, and fellowship. God always shows up in incredible ways on these nights of visitation, and you're sure to leave changed. This month will be extra sweet because we will be hanging out as a family after service for some ice cream and fellowship. Don't miss it. Heritage of Faith will be hosting our very first Super Champion Basketball Camp this summer. Children ages 9 through 13 are eligible to attend the event scheduled for June 5th through the 7th. Visit our website for more information and details on how to register. Ahoy mateys! We are excited to once again welcome Captain Rex's treasure adventure to our church. He and First Lady LaDonna will be sailing in June 10th through the 13th. We want to invite you to join us and bring your friends, your family, your neighbors, and everyone you know to this exciting event. This is not just for kids. Check out our events page for more information and let us know that you're coming by registering your family online. Do you desire to make an outward expression of an inward change? Visit our events page at heritageoffaith.com and register for our upcoming baptisms. If this is your first time at Heritage of Faith, welcome. We're so excited you're here with our church family and we're excited for the things that God is gonna do in your life. We wanna meet you. So please fill out one of these cards found in the seats in front of you and drop it off in our visitor's lounge on your way out. These are just a few of the events happening here at Heritage. To see more or to register for an event mentioned earlier, please visit our website, www.heritageoffaith.com backslash events. Good morning, everybody. Go ahead and rise up. It's time to get uh, going in the Holy Ghost, having a good time in the Spirit of the Lord. You guys are awesome. Thank y'all for being here with us this morning. Thank you for watching by way of internet. We're expecting God to do some exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I can ask, hope, or think this morning. We're expecting the glory of God to show up in your life specifically for you where you need God to meet you at this time in your life. He is always, this past week during staff, uh, Pastor Annette was talking about something to me about um, before staff, but just about Jehovah Nick time. God is always going to come through for you just in the nick of time. Amen? There are some times where patience is working at work, and I believe this morning there's going to be some manifestations of the goodness of God in your life like you've never seen before. Get clenched in, get ready, get excited about what God has for you, and let's have a good time celebrating Jesus together. Amen? All right, guys, this altar is open for people who need a little more room and who just want to cut loose a little bit, amen? Just set your affections on the Father. Set your affections on Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Your light shines through my darkness all oh, darkness like a fire it consumes all my fears and my failures and your grace overwhelms like a flood straight from heaven and your hope opens eyes to the floodgates of heaven and jesus
lost its hold when you came with your kindness and your goodness and your love breaks the chains of my heart of my mind and your power sets free all the captives and you bring
Jesus for life. Oh, death, where is your sting? See, Satan doesn't have power in death anymore. I think sometimes we look when a brother or sister goes on to be with Jesus, we feel like as a body of Christ, we missed it, or we feel like, God, we lost one. We don't lose them. And guess what? Death doesn't have the last say. And I think as a body of Christ, we tend to focus on where did we miss it? Why didn't we raise them up? Why didn't they, why didn't, why, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? All of us have had brothers and sisters or family go on to be with Jesus before what we thought was their time. Guess what, they have the last say. Because when Jesus comes back and puts his feet on the earth, so do they. (laughs) And where does Satan go? Oh, death, where is your sting? There's no fear in death, amen? darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, or just focus on his name. There's resurrection power in His name. Cancer trembles at His name. Cancer shakes at His name. It trembles and fears. Silence, fear, Jesus, Jesus. 
But she's like no other name, no other name I know. No other name, no other name I know. Come on, speak it out. Come on. There's no Church, come on.
We sing your praises, Jesus. Mm. Oh, la, la. Just lift your hands in this place. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Yeah. Just let the Lord sing over you and play over you. His song of victory for you. His song of victory over your loved ones. make the darkness tremble. Thank you that things change in the name of Jesus. Peace comes in the name of Jesus. Light invades darkness in the name of Jesus. 
healing manifests in the name of Jesus. Authority has been given in the name of Jesus. There's no name above that name. You know, for a theme for this morning, and the Lord kept ministering to me all week, is this phrase, ceasing from your own works and be de being dependent upon someone else's ability. This morning, that's what this morning service is going to be about. It's about ceasing from your own works and depending on the ability of another. You know, there is a, there is a phrase that we use and sometimes it can be flippant, just let go and let God, you know, meaning you don't have any responsibility. No, we have a responsibility. Our responsibility is trusting. Our responsibility is faith. Our responsibility is beholding Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You know, all of us need to, need to heed to this word this morning. I'm not, I, I'm not exempt from this as, as a minister, a pastor. Is, is I, has to, I have to cease from my own ability and my own works and be totally dependent upon the works of another. No matter where you are in your life right now, that needs to become a revelation in your life where you cease from your own ability and you are totally dependent upon the ability of another. Because see, it's been your ability that has got you maybe to where you are right now. And in order to get out of where you are right now, you're gonna to need to rely and be dependent upon the ability of another. You know, today, today is May 20th and, and the Jewish calendar today is Pentecost. Today is May 20th, today is Pentecost. So, so thousands of years ago, you know, when they were standing together in one accord, it said the Holy Spirit came in like a rushing mighty wind. You see, Jesus told them in Luke chapter 24, he told, he told them in Luke 24, he says, I want you to go to Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Why? Because they weren't going to be able to do what they were called to do in their own ability. So they had to come to a place where they were dependent upon the ability of another. So today is being the Pentecost, it's a celebration of the Holy Spirit that was sent into our lives to be someone that we could be dependent upon. Jesus said, I'm sending one just like myself. Just like myself. And he is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. Stop trying to lead yourself. Stop trying to lead your family yourself. Stop trying to do in your finances yourself. Stop trying to run your business yourself. Stop trying to figure out your purpose in life yourself. And bring, your, bring yourself under this place in this umbrella of grace that's found in Jesus and found in the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, this year is show me your glory. They, we're declaring show me your glory, show me your goodness, show me your power, show me your presence. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter, I want to read this to you. I had to, just heard this just a couple minutes ago. In, in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. So how was Jesus raised up? What does it say there? By the glory of the Father. See, Jesus couldn't raise himself. Jesus had to be reliant upon the ability of another. He was raised up by the glory of the Father. Even so, should we also walk in newness of life. This isn't talking about going to heaven. It's talking about how you're walking right now. So I mean, just as Jesus was raised up by the glory of the Father, how are you going to walk this life? By the glory of the Father. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, likewise, 
Reckon yourself to be dead. Not, not when you die. He says, now you, right now, reckon yourself dead to the things that have continued to destroy your life. So rely and be dependent upon another. It's the glory of God. It's being dependent upon the glory of God that's going to continue to shape the rest of your life if you let it. Jesus. Hallelujah. We've been talking about beholding. Behold, he's more than just a man. Hallelujah. Corinthians tells us, 2 Corinthians 4, says that when we look at Jesus, we're beholding the glory of God. When we look at Jesus, we're beholding the glory of God. You want to see the glory of God? Look at Jesus. You want to see the manifestation of his goodness, his presence, his power? Look at Jesus. Man, man, that's what this is all about. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Being dependent upon another. Father, I thank you for flowing throughout this service. And I just thank you that as, as your children, as believers this morning, we submit ourselves to become dependent upon another. We cease from our own way, doing our own things. We thank you for your ability. Thank you, Father, for continuing to minister to every heart through tithes and offerings, through the message, that we will not leave here like we came. But we will leave here empowered by another. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rick, come on up. and uh, You can go be seated. I'm going to go flow right into tithes and offerings. Hello, test. Yeah, there we are. Praise the Lord. Waiting for my guys. There they come. There we go. Good deal. Right there. Glory. I want to um, read something before I go into the tithes and offerings when the flow there. Um, in Philippians 2, we see that um, Jesus, verse 8, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. Come on. Ha. Huh. Think about that for just a second. Things under, what's under the earth? Say the devil. The devil, be real. Against principalities. Come on. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the keys of the kingdom and to give you everything that pertains to life and to godliness. Amen. So healing is your right. Amen. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're dealing with in your life, plead the blood of Jesus over it because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So recognize you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're not your family member that you're wrestling against. Come on, it's a principality and you've already been seated with Jesus in heavenly places far above all those. Take your authority, take your right place, but use the name of Jesus in order to get it done. Amen. All right, we're going to, we're going to drive into our uh, tithes and offerings this morning. I asked the guys to to set me up up here and uh, I'm going to sit here and just uh, what, I, what I wanted to, you to grab a hold of this morning because we come up here and we do our tithes and offerings uh, every week and I actually left my notes right over there. Could you bring those to me, Ree? That's awesome. You are awesome. So I had everything else but my notes. Hello. All right. So, you know, um, we get up here and our goal as, a, as pastors, as ministers is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry to make sure that you and I are all walking in the fullness that God has intended for us to walk in. 
And uh, we preach the word. We preach uh, the tithes and offerings from Scripture from Malachi chapter 3, uh, 10 through 12. And uh, we'll go to Luke 6, 36 sometimes. Uh, and we'll go to Galatians 6, 7 through 9. And we'll be in Proverbs uh, 3, uh, 9 and 10. And really trying to... Uh, to, to, to bridge a gap here of your understanding of where uh, your tithes and offerings and where your relationship with God is in the aspects of, of giving. And so I told Pastor, I said, I had this a couple of weeks on the inside of me, but um, I, uh, I recognized something that uh, the Lord began to minister to me about in, in light of everyone that's in here. And, and this is so important that it has to become personal. It has to become personal. Your walk, every, every area of your life with the Lord has to be personal. He is a personal God. He is wanting to spend time with you in every area of your life. And there's areas of our lives that we have to take the time to sit down just like I'm doing right now. And, I, and at my house, I, we've got some chairs that have... I love this. I got handles. I like sitting on the throne with God. Amen? The Bible says he seated us in the heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. He's raised us up together and made us sit together with him. So I kind of just get a picture for myself sometimes at home. This is me personally. I'm bringing a personal, really personal look for you for me where the tithes and offers are. I, I, I sit down every morning. And I spend time with just me and God alone. Whether it's talking about tithes and offerings or anything else, I really just have an open door for him to say whatever he needs to say to me every morning before I start my days. I want you to see something here. Uh, let's look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and then 9 through 10. And I want you to read this. In, we're going to read this out of the Passion Translation. Uh, I didn't let y'all know that up there, but I know y'all are great, so uh, we'll give them a second. But uh, I'm really enjoying my wife. And, and this is something like for me in the morning, Right now, I'm going through my Proverbs again, uh, but I'm going through it in the, in the Passion Translation for me personally. And I've, here's my journal with me. So I, I open my journal. I've got my pens, uh, and I'm a color-coordinated kind of guy, so I've got red pens, blue pens, when God talks to me about different things. But this is my personal. Amen. It's me for me. What well, God's going to talk to me about every single morning. So I, I'll sit down with the Lord, and I, I drink, a lot of you drink coffee, so I'll put a cup, cup here. Usually I'm drinking a Celsius, and y'all can... Or, or a water or something up there or some juice, but I'm just spending time with the Lord talking to him about what he wants to talk about. And there's times in my life where I need revelation in specific areas. And this morning, it's just like if, if I were to need a revelation from God where my finances are, I would just ask, I would talk to God like I'm talking to you. God, talk to me. Is there something that I need to know about what you need me to do where my finances are concerned? Is there something I'm not doing? Is there some, somebody I need to be a blessing to? I spend time with him talking about these things because they're important to him and they're important to me. It says this in Proverbs 3 in the, in the Passion Translation. It says, verse 5, it starts, starts off, trust in the Lord completely. So trust is huge. I, I trust God. I've spent a lot of time with God over my lifetime. So I trust God. So I can sit down and look eye to eye with God and go, okay, I trust you, God. So I'm talking to you. I'm being real with you. I need to be real with you about this situation. And so I, I sit down. You got to trust the Lord completely. Do not rely on my own opinion. I have a lot of opinions. Amen. All of us have opinions, right? And so my, my, my thinking is, okay, I sit down and I get the word of God out and I open it and I begin to read what God's word because I want his opinion, not mine. Amen. So I, I go to him and I trust him. I don't rely on my own opinion. With all my heart, I rely on him to guide me. So my rely, I'm relying on God. If I'm going this morning or any time, I, and I need some area, I need some help in an area of my life, I go to God where my finances are, and I'm going, hey, God, uh, I, need your, I need you to guide me where this is concerned. And this is cool. And he says, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Pastor Justin was talking about last week about the shepherd and how God's leading us. He's a good shepherd, and he wants to lead us to green pastures. He wants to lead us to calm waters. If there's turbulence going on in your life, it's not God. Amen. God wants to lead you to a peaceful place, a restful place in your life. But you got to let him do the leading. Amen. And then I like this next one. I put this big on my sheet of paper. Become intimate. Become intimate. And that's what I really want to hit home with us today as we look at this. I've got to become more and more intimate to, with God where my finances are concerned if I want God to show up big in my finances. 
I need to be an open book where, God, where that is concerned. But in any area of my life, if it's my kids, if it's my job situation, if it's uh, my life period, if it's somebody that I'm praying for, I need to become, in, God is an intimate God. And he says, become intimate with him and whatever you do, he will, lie, he will lead you wherever you go. And in verse nine, it says, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him. So I think it's really neat. I, I tied this together because he started off in verse five and then he's, he goes into eventually even into your finances. So there's an area here that he's wanting you and I to tap into that I can't give you, I can't tell you what you're supposed to do with your finances. Pastor Jess, we're not gonna tell you what you're supposed to do with your finances, but you know what? God wants to lead you where your finances are concerned. And that has to become something that you, you have a relationship with God over your finances. If you wanna see God do some great things in your finances, give God some greatness in your finances. Give him some quality time in your finances. Let him take you to the next level that you're believing to go to so that you can be the blessing that God created you to be. So look at the rest of this. Honoring him with your very best. With every increase that comes to you, then, and I highlight this, every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings. Every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings. When you're seeking God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, when you're delighting yourself in Him, when you're becoming more, the more intimate you become with God, the greater revelation other people will get of the God that you have on the inside of you. If you want to win people to Jesus, let them see a reflection of who Jesus is to you. If you want to see people, if you're trying to believe God to, for people to break through with their finances, let them see how you're letting God influence you and your finances. Be the giver that God created you to be. Amen? But it has to be you and God personally where that is concerned. You receive that? Praise the Lord. Well, Father God, we thank you for an opportunity to just hear from you. And I just decree and declare that every person in the sound of my voice, whether they're watching by way of internet or they're sitting in here today or watching later on or listening later on, that they allow you to, to share with them your heart's desire where their finances are concerned, that they'll set aside time to just uh, to spend t quality time with you so they can make quality decisions where their finances are concerned so they can go to the level that you desire to them, for them to go to, Lord. We bless them. We remind the devil that he's under our feet. We thank you, Lord, that you are rebuking the devourer for our sakes and you are opening the windows of heaven, pouring us out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. We receive this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Watch these videos and Pastor Justin will be right up. Good morning, Heritage of Faith family. We are so glad that you are here. Here are just a few announcements and events we have coming your way. We are so excited about our discipleship class. Take the next step in your walk with God as we cover the basics of faith in our next step class every Sunday morning before morning service. Here at Heritage of Faith, we love to fellowship as a family and our Thrive Groups are a great way for you to discover your purpose in our church community and connect with people that have the same interests as you. Talk to one of our Thrive Group leaders after service in the lobby to find the group that is right for you. Join us May 27th for a night of worship, prayer, and fellowship. God always shows up in incredible ways on these nights of visitation, and you're sure to leave changed. This month will be extra sweet because we will be hanging out as a family after service for some ice cream and fellowship. Don't miss it. Heritage of Faith will be hosting our very first Super Champion Basketball Camp this summer. Children ages 9 through 13 are eligible to attend the event scheduled for June 5th through the 7th. Visit our website for more information and details on how to register. Ahoy mateys! We are excited to once again welcome Captain Rex's treasure adventure to our church. He and First Lady LaDonna will be sailing in June 10th through the 13th. We want to invite you to join us and bring your friends, your family, your neighbors, and everyone you know to this exciting event. This is not just for kids. Check out our events page for more information and let us know that you're coming by registering your family online. Do you desire to make an outward expression of an inward change? Visit our events page at heritageoffaith.com and register for our upcoming baptisms. If this is your first time at Heritage of Faith, welcome. We're so excited you're here with our church family and we're excited for the things that God is gonna do in your life. We wanna meet you. So please fill out one of these cards found in the seats in front of you and drop it off in our visitor's lounge on your way out. 
These are just a few of the events happening here at Heritage. To see more or to register for an event mentioned earlier, please visit our website, www.heritageoffaith.com backslash events. Amen. Ooh, a lot of good things going on at Heritage. Also, uh, we'll be announcing soon as well, the girlfriends, the w women's ministry, will be having a breakfast on the 9th, I believe at 9 a.m., uh, so you can go online and register for that as well. All the ladies can register for that. Uh, and also, they mentioned baptisms. That's actually going to be during worship night. So we're actually going to be doing it in here during worship night. So if you've never been baptized or maybe you got baptized when you were a kid and you had no clue what you were doing, all you, know, all you knew is you went under and you came up and, and you had no clue what, what the understanding of that was, sign up in the lobby or go online and register for that. And we'd love for you to be a part of that. Also, uh, graduation season. So, um, so if you're a, you, you have a high school graduate, you're a high school graduate, and we want to make sure we honor you. We'd probably be doing it on the first Sunday in June. So make sure you contact the church and let us know because we want to make sure we honor your family, honor uh, the, your, um, your senior. Amen. Amen. You ready to get the word this morning? If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 12, and I'm not going to take time to review, um, just for the sake of time, because we're pretty much laying that foundation, even with what Rick talked about, about intimacy and trust. It's ceasing from our own ability, and we're relying on the ability of another. Say that, ability of another. And so in this whole aspect of teachings I've been doing about beholding Jesus, and last week talking about a shepherd, this week we're going to go in a different direction. Because after all, when Moses said, show me your glory, he was saying it because there was something within him that he recognized he lacked something. Yes. So when he w it wasn't just a statement of, well, just Lord, show me your glory. No, he recognized if I'm going to go there, if I'm going to lead this people, I need something more than what I have right now. Meaning, meaning he wasn't going to be able to do it in his own strength. He was going to have to rely and be dependent upon another. So let's continue to look at Jesus this morning. And in Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, it says, At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath. What day was it? Sabbath. Through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. What day? Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read that David, what David did when he was hungry and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread that was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, what day? The priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. But I say to you that in this place is one greater than the temple. In this place, there's one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Amen. Let's go to, go to Mark chapter 2. Verse 23, and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of the corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, behold, why do they on the, what day? <laughs> Thank you, Father. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said, and behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said to them, have you not read what David did when he had need? What did David have? He had a need. Yeah. Yeah. And was in hungered, and he and they that were with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the priest and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them that were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath... What? The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is the Lord also of the Sabbath. Father, I thank you for your word today, and I thank you that we will be energized by it, we'll be strengthened by it, and thank you that we will see your glory on our lives, your goodness, your presence, and your power on our lives in another way today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. 
You probably don't hear too many messages about the Sabbath. We're going to talk about the Sabbath this morning. Is that right, Jeremiah? We're going to talk about the Sabbath. Be pulling on me this morning because I I just want to just share some things with you that that I believe will enlighten us um, to what the Sabbath is all about. Because the, the Sabbath isn't about a particular day. The Sabbath is about ceasing from your own activity. It's about ceasing from your own work. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to teach for just a moment. And then, I might, then I might preach. You're like, what's the difference? I don't know. I just heard people say that. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm teaching now. No, I'm preaching now. I, I don't know. I am just, just want to be used by God. Amen. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his works, which he had created." And before I expound on this, I, I want to go back to just a phrase I, I said a moment ago in Mark chapter 2. It says how the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You weren't created just to celebrate a day that would honor God. Let me say, you weren't created to celebrate a specific day to just honor God. It, it's, it's not, you, the Sabbath wasn't created so you had something to do. No, the Sabbath was made for you, not you for it. You, you, know, you know, with this phone, it, it, naturally speaking, except for charging it, there's nothing I can do for this phone. I can't make this phone better than what it already is. I, there's, there's, this, this, this phone was created for me to use to be a blessing to my life. Anything, anything that's being created, you know, a light bulb, it was created, it was, you weren't created for the light bulb. The light bulb was created for you. You know, you know, and we thank God for toilet paper, right? But you know what? You were not, <laughs> it was created for you. You were not created for toilet paper. Now bring your minds back now. Come on, bring your minds back. You know, so, so we got to realize that the Sabbath isn't, wasn't about you having something to do on Saturday or Sunday. And see, that's a whole nother debate. I mean, come on. you know, there have been small wars fought on the, on the Sabbath. Do you worship on Saturday? Do you worship on Sunday? We're, we're more holy because we actually worship on the Sabbath. Well, see, we know the Sabbath, it's Shabbat, it means seven, it means rest. It, there's no, no, things I could bring out and we'll get into in just a moment. And there's been small wars fought over what day you worship and we're more holy because we actually do it on the right day. We know, it, there's no argument. We know the seventh day is Saturday. And, and technically it started, you know, uh, when God created the heavens and the earth, he, he didn't say there was morning and evening. He said there was evening and morning. Evening was first. So if you want to know when the correct Sabbath is, is, it's not the same time every week. It's based on when, when the sun sets and when the sun rises. So I think this past weekend um, in Texas, in, in Houston, Texas, uh, the Sabbath started, I think, at 8.04 on Friday evening, and it ended 8 o'clock last night. That, that, that was, the, that was the, the Sabbath. And so are you more holy because you went to church that day? Because that's the Sabbath. You say, oh, well, it was because, it was because of the, the Catholic Church. They had this edict that they said, and they changed the Sabbath. That is not how it happened. Because the truth of it is, I can show you in the New Testament where they went to church on Sunday. In Acts chapter 20, verse, Acts 20, verse 7, it said, And the disciples gathered together on the first day of the week, and Paul preached. So if the Sabbath is the seventh day, then what must be the first day? See, and the reason why the disciples chose to start worshiping on the first day of the week, because because that was the new day when Jesus was resurrected. So 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 it's not about an argument. Do you worship on Saturday? Do you worship on Sunday? Because if that's if that's where you find that you're holy, you're totally missing the mark of what the Sabbath is all about. 
See, we're beholding Jesus. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, and it was made for you and not you for it. Because if it wasn't all about us coming to church on a specific day, then that means we were, cre we were created for it. And that's not the case. See, God created. You know, and, and when God finished creation... He didn't rest because he was fatigued. He didn't rest because he was tired. He didn't rest because, because he didn't have anything else to do. He, it, it has nothing to do. It means because he was through. That's right. That's right. He rested because he was done. Yeah. He was done with creation. Well, does that mean that God has always rested? No. Let me, I read, you don't need to turn there, but you can write this down in John chapter 5, verse 16. I'll read this to you. For this reason, the Jews began to persecute, annoy, torment Jesus and sought to kill him because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. What day? Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father has worked even until now. He has never ceased working. He's still working. And I, too, must be at divine work. See, the whole understand, they didn't understand Jesus and why are you healing on this day? Why? Because my father is working and he's continuing to work even to this day. And Jesus said, I must continue to work. If you really understood what the Sabbath was all about, it, it, you wouldn't be offended that I'm healing people on the Sabbath because the Sabbath is all about resting in what's already been accomplished and resting in what's already been finished, resting in what Jesus had finished his work. So when, when we're celebrating the Sabbath, we're celebrating the finished work of creation. And not only that, but now we're celebrating the finished work of Christ. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. The Sabbath is all about you ceasing from your own ability and being dependent upon another's ability. You know, I think, it's, I think it's good, I think it's healthy to create a Sabbath in your life. I mean, I, I, I believe that it's healthy. So I'm not saying don't have a day of rest or you shouldn't have a day of rest. I'm just saying if that's how you think you're more holy, then you're totally missing what the Sabbath is about. Because Jesus said, I must, I can, Jesus says up to this hour, I'm still working. Didn't matter what day it was. I'm still working. What kind of work was he doing? He was doing God's work. Yeah. And so look, let's look at Colossians 2, verse 16. It says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So, it, so here, here, bottom line, you mean, here's Justin's terminology. Don't argue about if you eat pork or not. <laughs> Although, it, I'm just telling you, pork's not that healthy for you. It's, I mean, I, I'm just, just saying, because, because I'm telling you, there's wars fought over these things. And, and I'm telling you, people will find their holiness because they don't eat bacon. But I'm saying, it's, I'm telling you, it's true. It says, don't let judge in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of what? This, this, this isn't an argument. So, so he goes on to say this in verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So what is the Sabbath? The Sabbath in the Old Testament was a picture. It was a shadow of that which is to come. You see, a picture, I'll be sappy for a moment. Did my phone die? You see, in my phone here, man, all these messages stop. <laughs> You see, in my phone here is a picture of my wife and I. And in, isn't she pretty? Isn't she, isn't she pretty? Oh, it's black now? Yeah, there you go. You know, so, you know, very rarely are, are my wife and I apart. Um, you know, there's times where we have to travel different places, and probably the most we've been away from each other is probably, what, four days maybe? 
in 10 years. And so at one time, and, and so, so when we're away from each other, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look at her picture. Oh, say, oh, <laughs> trying to get some points. Is that okay? <laughs> no, honestly, seriously. But you know, you know what, but when, when, but when we're together, you know what? I don't, I don't pull my phone out and look at her picture. Why? Because I'm telling you, the picture just doesn't do it. it there's, there's something incomplete. I'm, I'm grateful for the picture that I have while we're apart. But you know what? When, when I have the real thing, man, forget the picture. You see, and, and that's what, what Paul was trying to communicate to the church of Colossae. He was saying, he was saying all these things were, were just a picture and a shadow of things to come, but they're what? They're speaking of Christ. Right. Yes. That's good. So in say, saying what really satisfy is not, is not the actual Sabbath day, but if you understand what the Sabbath is and you understand what the Sabbath's for, then it will totally, you'll be able, then it will bring some sort of completeness into your life. Because just knowing the Sabbath is a particular day, that doesn't bring a change. But when I understand what the Sabbath really is, not a day, and I understand that the Sabbath was made for me. Yes. Say, say me. me. It will totally change how you behold Jesus it will change how you come to church. It will change, this is more, it will change how you walk through difficult circumstances. Thank you, Father. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4 could actually read the last half of chapter 3, and you can read that later if you want. Let's look at verse 3. It's talking about the children of Israel entering the promised land. They couldn't enter in because of unbelief, because they couldn't rest. It says, verse 3 says, For we which had believed do enter in this rest. I mean, he was talking about them that didn't. He said, but we that believe do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, say rest. rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. What works were finished from the foundation of the world? God created. And what did he do when he got done created from the foundation? What did he do? He rested. See, when, as we behold Jesus this morning, we cease from our own ability and rely upon the ability of another. What we need to receive this morning is, is he is our Sabbath rest. We enter into rest. The Sabbath was made for you. And what does that mean? It means so we could enter into rest. And I'm going to define that here for you towards the end. Verse 4 says, For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in that place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Now here, you see, when, when, back in Genesis, when he said, he said he blessed the seventh day. And I, I want to read this to you in Exodus. You don't need to turn there. Exodus 20, verse 11. It says, For in six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them. And he rested the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. it set, he set it apart for his purpose. He blessed the Sabbath day. Now, now, under, now just track with me for a moment. When God first blessed something in Genesis chapter 1, he blessed it so two things would happen. And this is a hermeneutics, preaching, teaching. It's called the law of first mention. So when you see something in the Bible the first time, it, 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 can mean, it means that throughout Scripture. It carries that same context throughout Scripture. And so, so when we see the blessing first mentioned, we see two things deposited because of the blessing. We see fruitfulness and we see dominion. Say that with me. Fruitfulness, fruitfulness. and dominion. 
So when God then turned another time in the third time he says this word, he says it about that seventh day. He blessed the seventh day. Why didn't he bless the other six days? He said they were good, but the seventh day he blessed it. Why? Because the blessing, when he blessed the seventh day, he was saying this day is about fruitfulness and dominion. So if you understand and we understand the Sabbath, then all of a sudden now we understand the Sabbath is for fruitfulness and it's for my dominion. Now, now just, just, just stay with me here because you need to see that this Sabbath is not just about worshiping in a particular day, but when you receive what the Sabbath does in your life, you receive the blessing and that blessing is for you to be fruitful. That blessing is for you to walk in dominion. So when we totally possess what the Sabbath is all about, it's going to produce fruitfulness and dominion. It's going to produce fruitfulness and authority in your life. When you truly know what this Sabbath is, it's going to bring, it's going to increase your faith. It's going to increase your walk. It's going to increase your fruitfulness. It's going to increase your authority. Because it's not just about showing up at church on a specific day. Because no, the Sabbath was made for you. The Sabbath was made for you so you could have dominion and so you could be fruitful. So here, back in Hebrews, verse, uh, let's go to verse 6. It says, seeing therefore, it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day in saying in David, today... After so long a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice and don't harden your hearts. Verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Therefore, there remains a rest to the people of God. See, today there's a rest for you. Today, there's a rest for you. Amen. Today, there's a rest for you. What, what's, what's overwhelming you? What's pressuring you? What's, what's, um, what is just weighing you down? What's heavy on your heart? What's going? Because you need to understand that there is a rest that remains for you. Yeah. Verse 10, for he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Now hear that. There remain therefore a rest to the people of God for he that enters into this rest. So when I enter into his rest, that means I've ceased from my own works as God did from his. So what is this morning about? Ceasing from your own works and depending on the ability of another. Verse 11, let us therefore enter into this rest. Let us therefore enter into this rest. As we behold Jesus this morning, he is our Sabbath rest. Now let's go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Now we st I started in Matthew chapter 12, and I wanted to come full circle with this. Because Jesus in Matthew 12, you know, the Bible wasn't written in chapter and verse. Chapter and verse were for us so we could, we could find context. And so Jesus, when he started verse 12, he, it wasn't like all of a sudden there's a new idea or it's a new thought. He goes right into 11, he goes right from 11, right into 12, and he talks about the Sabbath. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. He says, all things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knows the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father except the son, and to he whomever the son will reveal him. Verse 28, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, Jesus was talking in Matthew 12 and really talking about the Sabbath day because he goes, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. Not come unto Saturday and I'll give you rest. Not come unto to Sunday and I'll give you rest. Come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of, he wants us to learn of him. Yes. Well, what does he want us to learn in here? He wants us to learn that he's our Sabbath. Because in the next chapter, he goes, you want to learn of me? I'm going to tell you who I am because I'm greater than the temple. It's not just about going to the place because there's one greater than the temple. It's me. It's me. They, in, in, in 12, I didn't, I didn't go, go here with that, but in 12, he goes and offer him. He goes, he even talks to the Pharisees, Joseph, and he says, he goes, if you have a sheep and on the Sabbath day and he falls into ditch, wouldn't you pull him out? And he goes, he goes, how much more is a man? How much more is a man? And Jesus is describing, you know, hey, come unto me. You're down in a ditch. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. If you're heavy, laden and burdened, I'll give you rest. As we behold Jesus, you need to see he's the one that's going to bring you rest. Come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest. Unto your souls. Now here, in two places, we see a place where he gives rest. And secondly, there's a place where we have to find rest. He gives rest when you receive him. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, he gave you peace. Man, when he came into your heart, there's a peace. But also realize in this journey, in life, you're going to have challenges. In life, there's going to be circumstances. In life, there's going to be hard times. In life, you're going to get bad news. In life, you're going to get bad reports. In life, there's certain things that are going to happen. But what did Jesus say? In this world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer because what I have overcome them. Who is he? He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And so there's a thing as you're walking through things that you have to take on his yoke. You know what? In, 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 in Jesus, in the, in the time, most of the time you never saw one ox. There wasn't a yoke. There was always two. That's why Jesus was saying, take my yoke. So most of the time when you, when you see this, it wasn't just one yoke and one ox and pull it, pull it. No, there was two oxen. And so this is, this is my message, and so this is my, my opinion this morning. That I believe that what in life, after we, we, he gives us the peace when we receive him, I think it's up to us to make the decision to be yoked with him. Yes. That we be yoked next to him. He goes, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek. But just let me walk with you. Let me walk with you in the field of life. Walk with me. Learn of me. See, that's what he was telling the disciples. Just walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. And see, when you walk with me, you're going to find rest. See, there's a, there's a place where he gives rest, and that's when you receive him. But there's a place when you find rest, and that's when you walk with him. Amen. Receiving him and walking with him. You know, coming up on Wednesdays, we're going to be starting a series called I Have Decided. And there's a difference between a believer and a disciple. A believer receives, but yet a believer never really has to walk. But yet a disciple does. See, this is so important because you need to understand, you have to cease from your own works, your own ideas, your own opinions, and take on his yoke. Take on his opinions. Take on his ideas. Take on his teachings. And when you take on that, you'll find rest. You'll find rest. Thank you, Father. So rest is given and rest is found. Thank you, Father. Go to Exodus 33 and I'll close with this. You know, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your goodness. Show me your power. Show me your presence. I asked the Lord, just as the Lord started speaking to the, me about this, and, and I was like, Lord, I, I want you to show me how does the Sabbath, how does rest connect to show me your glory? 
Show me your goodness. Show me your power. Show me your presence. And remember, I, I, I was talking about when Moses declared that, he was recognizing his need for something besides himself. And the Lord took me to this scripture. Verse 13 in Exodus 33. It says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Stop there for a second. You know, I didn't read all the way through Hebrews chapter four when he talked about entering into that rest. But if you read the last several verses of Hebrews four, he tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace, that we obtain mercy and grace and help in help in the time of need. So entering into that rest is coming into the throne of grace. Jesus said, if you want rest and you're heavily, come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and you will find rest for your souls. So God's speaking to Moses here. He says, I pray that I found grace in your sight. And verse 14 says, and he said, God said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Show me your glory. Show me your goodness. Show me your presence. Show me your power. Man, his glory produces rest. His glory produces rest. As we behold Jesus, he's more than just a man. Man, he's our Sabbath rest. That's right. Jesus gave us the ability to come boldly to the throne of grace. What is rest? Worship team, you can come up. What is rest? In the Hebrew, it's, it comes from a word, nuach, and it means to settle down. It means to be quiet. Sometimes we... <laughs> Sometimes we, we have a hard time entering into rest because we can't be quiet. Because we either can't shut our mouths or shut our minds down. You see, you, you know, it's hard to enter rest if you're doing all the talking. But God, you don't understand. But, but God, you don't understand. You, well, well, you know, but, 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 but God, you know, uh, it's, you know, um, you need to settle down. Quiet down. And when I saw this, this word for rest, and I, and I saw this, one of the figures it gives us, it's to catch your breath. Amen. To catch your breath. To catch your breath. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amen. Meaning his presence on your life will help you catch your breath. You know, sometimes, we, what, is, what does anxiety do? When you hear someone's having a panic attack, what elevates their breathing? Yep. Hard to breathe. But rest is present so you can catch your breath. This word also in the Hebrew, and I love, I love the Hebrew language, I love the, the, the Greek language, because not only is it a, um, it, it, it always provides pictures of things. Like if you look at the word dishonor, you know, the, the Hebrew picture that it gives and denotes is steam. Meaning it's, you can open a door or open a window and the steam just goes out the door. Meaning dishonor, it's lightly, it's lightly what, esteemed. It's it's a, it's you know, dishonor. It's meaning it's not value. It's not weight. It's not weighty. I just open the window, the steam leaves. It's, there's nothing to it. But this word rest, the picture that it gives is a camel that's kneeling down. And I was like, what does that mean? And I was just praying about this and, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, he said, camels kneel down for two main reasons. One, to rest their legs. 
And secondly, as they kneel down, the owner will take the burdens off them. You see, when the camel kneels down from a long journey, you know, man, they would, they would pack those camels down. Believe us in Kings when he talked about how this king was sending 40 camels that said loading down and bearing goods to give to the prophet. And so, man, they, they packed these things with everything that they had. And they would move from one, one town to another. They were nomads just going across the desert. They would go with kind of where the rain is, where the vegetation is. But yet when the, when the owners of the camels would get to the place where they would rest to give them water, not only would they refresh them with the water, but it would take the burdens off them. So when I kept hearing that all week about us, all of us, me included, ceasing from our own works and depending on the works of another. I just got this picture of the Lord just taking burdens off you, taking weights off you, taking cares off you, taking pressure off you. Man, we behold Jesus. And you come to him, it allows him to just take those weights off. Oh, Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You take every burden off. The word talks about, in Isaiah 10, verse 27, he talks about the Messiah that would come talks about a rod that would come out of Jesse, which represents coming from the seed of David, which who the Messiah would come through. And it says that, that the anointing would remove every yoke and it would destroy every burden. Thank you, Father. Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for removing every yoke and removing and destroying, destroying every burden. Yes. Hallelujah. He is your Sabbath rest. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. here this morning you said pastor I really needed this message You're speaking right to my heart and I'm not going to label one thing or another but I believe all of us are looking in some aspect of rest So if that's you this morning, you're like, Pastor, I need this, need this message. I, I just want you to just come to the altar. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. You know, and lay your burden down. I, this, I, don't, I may pray over people, I don't know, but I think more importantly, this is about you releasing out of your heart and letting him minister back to you. Just fill the altar. If you want to get on your knees, get on your knees. I mean, you know, the altar is just a place where you can leave things. It's a, it's a place where you can leave the care. You can leave the worry. You can leave everything at the altar. And, and you can receive what he has for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, we praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That song says, he makes the darkness tremble. Hallelujah. There, there, there's, there's something about the anointing. There's something about the anointing. It can be ministered in a lot of different ways, but I love when, when the anointing just comes in the room and ministers directly to your heart. And where tears stream down your face and you don't know why they're streaming down your face. It's just something that just overcome you, over, overcame you. And I'm just going to pray a simple prayer and I may, I may lay hands on people. I'm just following the direction of the Holy Spirit. But before there is a receiving, a lot of times there has to be a releasing. Let me say that again. A lot of times before there's a receiving, there has to be a releasing. Even when it comes to salvation, oftentimes when we pray, usually the first thing we do as it pertains to salvation is we release our sins. And what do we do? We receive his righteousness. Peter talks about his righteousness for our unrighteousness. So there's always an exchange of I'm giving him something so I can receive what I need. Hallelujah. So everyone just pray this after me. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus. I'm grateful for Jesus. I thank you that Jesus is greater than. Thank you that Jesus is more than enough. I look to Jesus this morning. He is and will always be my Sabbath rest. I give every care every worry, every sin, every mistake, every issue. I give you my dreams. I give you my hopes. I give you my calling. I lay it down at your feet because I can't do that calling in my own ability. I cease from my works today and I choose to be dependent upon the ability of another. I release it. Hallelujah. Just start worshiping him. Just start worshiping him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, na 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 Darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus.
Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Is it on? Is it on? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. I just got this picture, this image as I was praying. You know, as long as you're running, the devil's going to chase you. How many of y'all feel like you've been being chased? He doesn't let up. But as long as you keep running, he's going to keep chasing you. But the minute you stop, that second you stop and kneel before God <laughs> and enter into that rest, you conf confuse the enemy. <laughs> you become untouchable when you're in rest. You become untouchable when you're entered into God's rest. When you allow him to take that burden off of you, the enemy just stands back like, okay, I thought we were running here. I thought we were running. I was chasing you. We've been playing this game for a long time. You run, I chase. But when you stop and you kneel before God, you cease from working. You allow his finished work to rule and reign in your life and you kneel you say this burden is yours he took it it's done stop running stop running just rest <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Father. You're so good. You're 
so good. Hallelujah. We rest in you. Show us your glory, Father. Show us your glory, Lord. What a sweet place to be in his presence. Is there someone that's here that you wanted to come to the, come up here but you couldn't because of physical reasons? Just slip your hand up. Is there someone you couldn't come to the front because maybe standing or walking or something? Just slip your hand up. I just want to be sensitive. Hallelujah. Is that anyone? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, for your goodness. Mm. Be saturated with your presence. Filled with glory. Filled with glory. Filled with glory. Filled with glory. As we leave today, we'd be filled with glory. Leave today, our cars will be filled with His glory. Our houses and homes will be filled with His glory. And our workplaces will be filled with His glory. Our local schools will be filled with glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up Santa Fe High School to you, and we lift up that community. Lord, and I just declare the peace of God over that community. I declare what the enemy meant for evil. I thank you that even now in the midst of tragedy, I thank you that the Father, the Good Shepherd, hallelujah, is bringing rest to that community. Rest to that community. Rest to every family member involved. Rest. Rest. We speak divine protection and divine peace over all of our local schools, Father. Thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against our children shall prosper. No weapon formed against our community shall prosper. We rest in Jesus, who is our Sabbath rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Catching your breath. Catching your breath. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Do you have anything? Thank you, Father. God is so faithful. Thank you, Father. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Man. Hallelujah. I just, you know, I just can't get away from this. Just something having to do with relationships and and a relationship has been destroyed. Could be family members. It could be husband and wife. It could be. I just have my heart to just have you have you come to the front. It could be marriage. It's something that's been destroyed. Maybe it's, a, like I said, a mother, daughter, father, son. It could be uh, just a relationship that's been stretched and there's been um, like almost a severing in this relationship. Can I have a lady stand behind the ladies and a man stand behind the men? Oh. We're a church family. We don't walk through things alone. Hallelujah. And all the Lord just told me to say over you is I can restore. But it's first the restoration in you. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes it's dealing with the spiritual aspect first before dealing with the natural aspect. And, and so the Lord just wants me to say, restore over you. Restore, restore, restoring you. You know, everything comes out of our heart. The enemy wants to get in our heart because he gets in our hearts. He controls decisions, choices. That's why we have to guard our heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. And so when circumstances happen, the enemy wants to control you out of your heart and your emotions and, and so forth. When I went through a devastating thing, the Lord told me, he said, he said, keep your heart right and you will be restored in less than a year. Thank you, Father. Restore. 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 Oh, minister life to these people. Restore. Restore. We rest in your ability to restore. Restore. Thank you, Father. Restore. Restore. Oh, restore. Restore. Hallelujah. Now, as I pray for you, the Holy Spirit is a director and guide. He may show you something to do, show you what you need to do in the situation. Maybe he just will say, rest. Maybe he'll say, I've got it under control. Maybe he'll say, he'll say, You've done everything you've you, you, you done. It's time to, to, to let go. Whatever it is, he's the director. He's the guider. If you've done everything you can do, you rest in me. You rest in me. You rest in me. And I'll restore. I'll restore. Joel says he restores the years. He restores the years. He restores the years. Oh, I thank you for restoration. Restoration. Hallelujah. Restoration. Oh, hallelujah. Restoration. 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 Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, you sit on the throne and you make all things new. You sit on the throne and you make all things new. Hallelujah. You make things new. Hallelujah. You make all things new. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing a work, Father. Comforting his heart.
Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for restoration. 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 Comforter, comfort. Fill every void. Fill every void. Oh, you put the solitary in families. You are a, a husband. Oh, you are a mother. You are a, a father. You are anything and everything that we need you to be in this season of restoration. Oh, Father, I just thank you for restoration. 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 You make all things new. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father, for restoration. Peace. Peace to let go. Peace to let you move. Put peace to let you work. Put peace to let you bring things back in order and bring, bring, that, bring, bring things back into line. Thank you for peace. Thank you, God. Thank you for peace. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, oh thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Man. It's hard to end a service like this. And <laughs> so what do you do next? But I know that the Lord is ministering and will continue to minister throughout the day. Watching by way of internet, we speak life and health and restoration over you. We thank you for being a part of our church family. You know, as we dismiss today, I want you to just put your arms like this, like you're giving yourself a hug. This is from Annette and I. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of those Holy Ghost hugs, you know. Uh, know that you're loved by us. Know that you're loved by God. And I love this. He that began a good work in you will complete it. As you leave today, let him complete that work he started in you. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you on Wednesday.